Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. And it's higher than the mountains that I face. And it's stronger than the power of the grave. And it's constant in the trial and the change. This one thing remains. This one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, your love, and on and on and on and on it goes. Yes, it overwhelms and satisfies my soul. And I never, ever have to be afraid. This one thing remains. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love, your love, in death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. This one thing remains, this one thing remains. Well, hello there, and thank you for joining us for Forsyth Church of Christ. This is our Sunday morning worship and Bible study time. You may be watching it at some other time, and that's that's fine. We're just glad that you're here. I'm John Dobbs, preaching minister for Forsyth Church of Christ. This is Daniel Kirkendall, our associate minister. And we're honored that you've chosen to be here today. We want this to be an experience for you, uh, one that you can engage in. John and I value you as part of who we are as a church, and so Throughout the video, if you have a question, an amen, a comment, uh, please please use the uh, the comment section below the video. Like, follow, subscribe, and share, and that way we can be a blessing. This message can be a blessing to as many people um, as possible. Throughout the video, our website facoc.org will be on the screen. I encourage you to look uh, to take a look at that after the video. But at the end of the video, I'll have some more things to say about the website. Kind of tell you what's available there that may help you out. Um, other than that, I hope you do enjoy uh, the message today and, and the, the experience. And um, it's my prayer that you can glean something from it that can help you in your daily life. That's right. You know, when we're watching something, especially when we're home or maybe by ourselves and watching a video, there can be a lot of distractions and maybe we uh, decide to do something else. I want to encourage you to watch this entire message and to stick with us because I think that there's some really important things that we'll share from the scriptures here. We're going to kind of begin with a video to set our hearts and our minds on following after God. And, and I hope that you will uh, think about that while we watch this brief video, and then we'll come back with the message for today.
we're going to talk today about the idea about how to be a how to be strong, how to find your strength in the Lord. And if you have your Bible nearby, we're going to be in First Timothy chapter one, starting about verse twelve through the rest of the chapter. But uh, I want to encourage you to think about this idea because what does it mean to be a strong? Christian. When I say that word strong Christian, somebody may even come to mind, somebody that you know that you think is somebody who is strong in the Lord. We might answer in terms of of activity, how much we do for the Lord. Is that what makes a strong Christian? Somebody who's always doing something for God and and staying real busy in the kingdom. Uh, What about uh, faith? We, We might answer that question in terms of faith. How much do we believe in the Lord? You can do a lot of things without actually having a lot of belief. But how about, is that what makes a strong Christian, this idea of faith, how much we believe in the Lord? And we might think about that question in terms of comparison, you know, like, I'm, I, well, I may not be as strong as this Christian, but I'm a lot stronger than this Christian. And, and in those comparisons, we kind of make a, a way for us to feel good about our faith. Um, I think a lot of us, when we ask about, you know, what does it mean to be a strong Christian, might even wonder why we feel so weak as a Christian. And and, and why does being a strong Christian seem like something that's far away from us? Well, in this text, I think there's some real answers to that question and to that uh, decision to want to be a strong Christian and find our strength in the Lord. The truth is that our strength is in the Lord and not in ourselves. Dwight Moody said that when a man has no strength, if he leans on God, he becomes powerful. Apostle Paul said it a little bit different. He said, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. And that's an interesting statement. It seems backwards, but it's the reality for all of us until we look at ourselves and say, everything I have depends on Christ and depends on the Lord, then I'm never really going to find the spiritual strength that that I need. Our true strengths be found in Jesus Christ. That was a message that a young minister named Timothy needed to hear. He may have struggled with being a little timid and and shy, maybe even a little bit of fear in his ministry. And and there were some, some pretty big circumstances he had to deal with that uh, were probably a big challenge for a young minister. And so Apostle Paul writes to Timothy to try to encourage him, to strengthen him. And uh, when Paul writes to Timothy, these are among his last Letters. It, it won't be too long before his death at the hands of the Emperor Nero. Uh, and we think about Paul, he lived such a bold life. But we shouldn't ever think that Paul was just this go, 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 uh, never have a moment of doubt, never have a weakness, never have any uh, loss of strength or being uh, his attention being diverted elsewhere. He was a real person. And so there were times where he was really strong and there were times when he was really weak. He dealt with his own struggles, but he learned to lean on the Lord in the weakest times. And that made him a strong influencer for Jesus Christ. And, and so Paul writes to Timothy to bolster his faith, to encourage him, and to help him stand strong. And he says in verse 12, 1 Timothy 1 and verse 12, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength. So how do we find strength for the Christian walk? I want to give you a few ideas from this chapter that I think are really powerful. One is that we find strength in the Lord's mercy and grace. Look at verse 13. He said, Even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. So Paul, in this text, acknowledges his painful past. He said, I used to be a blasphemer. I used to be a a persecutor, a violent man. You know, I mean, he really is going into some detail there. He could have just said, well, everybody's got a past, but but he instead labels his past. And, and sometimes we can be overwhelmed with our past, with our decisions we've made, with the regrets that we're living with, with the troubles that uh, the consequences of our decisions have built up on us and uh, mistakes that we've made. And Paul is saying that, you know, even though I used to be this violent persecutor, blasphemer guy, God still gave me his mercy. And mercy is God's love in spite of what you've been. And we would expect God's anger and his punishment, but oftentimes, unexpectedly, the mercy of God 
is what we receive. We sing that song sometimes in the church where I grew up. Uh, Mercy there was great and grace was free. Pardon there was multiplied to me. And there my burdened soul found liberty at Calvary. And I love that old song because it reminds us that our true happiness, the true strength, the true mercy and grace of God is found at the cross. And, and when we think about how God has such great mercy on us and, and gives us such grace, For once someone believes in you, they see you for who you really are. They believe in you. They are, uh, they're not labeling you on your past, not uh, labeling you on your problems or your troubles. They're not trying to, to say, well, look at what this person has done and always bringing that up. You know, humans do that to each other. But God, in his mercy, he sees beyond all of that to see and to love you. And Paul says that God's grace was poured out upon him abundantly. And so mercy is God withholding what we deserve, and grace is giving us what we do not deserve. Grace is abundance beyond measure. It's always more than enough. And and in the language that Paul wrote, he used a word that really means hyper or super. So he says the grace of God is super abundant or it's hyper abundant. And it flooded Paul's heart to think about all that he'd experienced in his life and yet still receiving the mercy and the grace of God. John Stott, a noted uh, Bible scholar, said, Grace flooded with faith, a heart previously filled with unbelief, and flooded with love, a heart previously polluted with hatred. One of the ways we're going to really find strength in the Lord is to find it in his mercy and his grace. Another way that we're going to find strength in the Lord is we're going to find strength in salvation. Look at verse 15. He says, here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. And so Paul reflects not only on his past and and the things that he had done and, and, and how much mercy and grace he'd been given, but also he reflects on the present, the salvation that he experiences in Christ, that Christ came to save. That was his mission. What what was Jesus doing here? Why did he come here? Why did he live the life he lived and say the things he said? It was all so that we could be saved. Christ came to save sinners. He didn't come to, to pat religious and righteous people on the back. He came to save people who really needed him. The great physician came to heal those who were sin sick. And Christ came to save me. And Paul makes it so personal. He says, you know, he came for for me, the chief of sinners, the worst of sinners. Again, John Stott says that Paul was so vividly aware of his own sins, he couldn't conceive that anybody could be worse. It's the language of every sinner whose conscience has been awakened and disturbed by the Holy Spirit. And Paul's message really is this. If Christ could save me, look at who I was. And if Christ could save me, he can save you. And this is our story. Christ came to save me. And to be saved is to receive eternal life. It's one of our great assurances in this world of earthquakes and wildfires and pandemics and brutality and terrorism and and natural disasters. I mean, you name it, right now the world just seems like it's in chaos. And we need to know this is not all there is to life. 1 John 5, 11 says, This is the testimony God has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. See, eternity is not just the payoff at the end. It's the assurance that we have now for living this life. We can find strength in the Lord's mercy and His grace and in salvation, and we can find grace and strength in praise. Look at verse 17 as Paul talks about all this. He says, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. As he thinks about what God has done and how it's impacted his life, he's just moved 
into praise and realizing this great blessing. Paul's just uh, exuberant in expressing his love for God. You know, I'm afraid sometimes we neglect the power of praise. We don't think about praise, but when we praise God, we're reminded that God alone is worthy. We lift him up in our, with our words and in our heart and our thoughts as we recognize that there is no God other than God. And we lift him up in that way. We're reminded of why he alone is worthy. We affirm why we devoted ourselves to him. When we're praising him, we're saying, yes, that's why I live for him. Yes, that's why I wear the name of Jesus. Yes, that's why I obey the scriptures. We have this feeling, this idea that we are able to serve a God like this because we're praising him. And it's just those reminders. And God is actually blessed by our words. Did you know that you could bless God? The scripture says in Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. When we praise God, he's pleased with that. He, he's seeing that we recognize who he is and, and we bless him. In the Old Testament, buried in the pages of Second Chronicles 20, there's a story about King Jehoshaphat who, uh, who was about to face some bitter enemies of God. I mean, they were really rugged, tough, and ruthless people. And he was about to go against them. And he prayed to God. And then he went out and he prayed before the people. And the Bible says that while they, while he was leading Judah in prayer, they began to praise him. And it says, at the very moment they began to sing and give praise, the victory was theirs. That's when things started turning around. That's when the enemy started to flee. That's when God's people were uh, at their greatest. And I think sometimes when we are struggling in our life, we just need to praise God. And at the moment that we begin to praise him, we realize God is so much bigger than all of our troubles. He's been so faithful to us in all of our struggles. He's always there for us. And so don't forget to praise. How many times have we passed over prayers of praise and thereby lost the strength that God wanted to give us. But we forgot to praise. We forgot to remember who it is that we serve. So I think we find great strength in God's mercy and grace and his salvation and his praise. And we find strength in the fight. <clears throat> Verse 18 says, Timothy, my son, I'm giving you this command in keeping with the prophecies once made about you so that by recalling them, you may fight the battle well, holding on to faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected and have sh suffered shipwrecked with regard to the faith. Among them are Hymenaeus and Alexander, whom I've handed over to Satan to be taught not to blaspheme. So Paul's really getting personal with Timothy and talking about some experiences he's had, but he tells him in that to fight the battle well. And that idea of fighting and being in a battle is very common in the Bible. It's true because we're fighting a spiritual uh, enemy. We have an enemy who hates us. Do you realize sometimes we think we don't think very much about Satan and, and the devil and, and uh, demons and some of that stuff? We don't really like to think about all of that. But do you realize that you have an enemy who really hates you, who really wants you to be lost. And we must not ever let our guard down in our fight against him. Uh, David Platt said, we're in a war, brothers and sisters in Christ. And whether you're a teenager at school or a business person at work, the battle is raging all around you. Spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms are active. They are warring against your soul. The devil and all the minions of hell will entice you with deceptions, incite you with divisions because they do not want the gospel to resound in and through your life. He goes on to say that he doesn't want the gospel to resound through your life, through your marriage, through your family, or any other area. The battle will look differently in each of our lives, but do not be caught off guard. You are in a war. And in this war, there are two weapons that, that we really need. And one is faith, trusting God to be the victor, and a good conscience. See, faith believes that God will bring the victory whether we can see it or not. We don't have to see it. We don't have to know how God's going to do all that he's going to do, but we trust him. And then a good conscience requires a holy life. You know, we're putting all of our hope, all of our strength 
in Christ, but that doesn't mean that we're not making the effort to live a holy life as well, to be obedient to the teachings of Scripture. When we're dependent on God's grace and mercy, we're struggling also to live the Jesus life. So don't wreck the ship. When we reject God's path and try to live our own way and our own wisdom and our own strength, we're not going to stay afloat. We're, this is not a fight, a fight we can win. And so Paul even noted two people who had left behind their faith. Stay in the fight. And there's one more uh, teaching here that I want to mention. I wish I had time to really dive in with this and spend a lot of time with it, but I'm just going to mention a few basics here, and that is we find strength in prayer. He says in chapter 2, verse 1, I urge then, first of all, that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior, who wants all people to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. And I think this gives us sort of a global picture of what it means to be strong in the Lord and to realize that when we pray that we're finding strength that, that doesn't come from us, it comes from God. And so just some highlights real quick. I don't have time to talk about each one of these, but, but we pray all kind of prayers for all people. We pray world-shaking prayers. When you're praying for the kings and people in authority all around the globe, this is an earth-shaking prayer. God hears that prayer. He's moving in that. And again, we may not see it all. We may not understand how God's at work, but I do believe He is. And so we pray world-shaking prayers. We pray for the lost to be saved because that's what God really wants. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. We pray in the power of Jesus, he says, and we pray uh, that, uh, that God is going to be at work. And so I love that old uh, missionary uh, to China, Hudson Taylor. He wrote this, Do not work so hard for Christ that you have no strength to pray. Prayer requires strength. It requires effort. And so let's put some effort into our prayer. So, so what does it mean to be a strong Christian? It means to find your strength in Christ and not yourself. Notice I didn't give you a list of things to do. You know, there's not 10 steps here. This is about putting our faith and our trust in the Lord, to trust in His mercy and grace, to make your own salvation sure, to continually offer up praises, to fight the good fight, and to pray without ceasing. You know, that may sound like a lot. And probably each one of those points we could do its own separate lesson about. But, but the truth is, your enemy is never going to stop working against you. So he's trying to weaken your faith in the Lord. All of these things are strengthening us and causing us to grow in our faith. So always remember that when you can't, he can. And when there's no way, he will make a way. And when you're exhausted, he's never tired. And when you're tempted, he's always by your side. And when you're failing, he's always lifting you up. And when you're weak, then he is strong for you and in you. So do you trust him? I want to encourage you today to put your trust in Christ. And I, want to, I wonder for some of you, maybe what's keeping you from giving your life to Christ? Just look at all the strength and blessing that he wants to give us just in this one text. It's such a beautiful testimony of how much God loves us. And so I want to encourage you to have faith in Christ, to turn away from your sin and turn toward Him, and to initiate that Christian life in baptism to receive what Christ has to offer you. I hope that you have your communion elements nearby. Every week we, are, uh, we take communion together, and I want to think about that just for a minute and have a prayer. Then we'll have a song, and Daniel will come in and, and uh, wrap up our time together and, uh, and share some, some information with you I think that you need to hear. So let's, let's pray together as we think about communion, about what Christ has done and He is doing and what He will do. Lord, thank you so much for these great blessings. It's overwhelming to read through this chapter and to see just Paul encouraging young Timothy over and over again to put his trust in you, to keep Christ at the forefront of his life, to, to remember to praise and to trust. And when we think about the cross, that's what we're doing. We're, we're praising you that such a great sacrifice was made for, for the undeserving, for people like us. 
as Paul would say, the chief of sinners, people who have a past, people who have mistakes, people who have regrets. That's all of us. So thank you for this immeasurable gift of going to the cross on our behalf. Thank you for the resurrection and the hope that it brings. Thank you for the body and the blood of Christ. Thank you that Jesus loves us so much. Thank you that we are able to remember today what has been done on our behalf. And Father, make us strong. Help us to depend more and more on you. Uh, in the, these days of chaos, we turn to you. And we ask for your help and your strength. And it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but only trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone, cornerstone, Weak made strong in the Savior's love Through the storm He is Lord, Lord of all When darkness seems to hide His face I rest on His unchanging grace Every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love. Through the storm, He sound Oh may I then in him be found dressed in his righteousness alone faultless stand before the throne Christ alone cornerstone we Strong in the Savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all, Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. What a great message uh, today from John. And I encourage you, um, as you take that message, you go into your daily life, you find ways to help others and find strength in the Lord. Also, what I'd encourage you to do is on the screen, I'm trying to look and see, it's right here uh, below me, facoc.org. Go check out our website. It has general information like our meeting times, which are 10 o'clock on Sunday morning and 6 o'clock on Wednesday night. I encourage you to come to those if you are able to. We also have life group Bible classes following our Sunday morning worship, and you're invited to all those things, and we have room uh, for people just like you. Also on the website, you can go look and you can see that uh, I'm sorry, you can go look and you can subscribe to the texts and the emails that are sent out from Forsyth Church of Christ each week. If you want to uh, be updated with what's going on or if you want to help um, 
pray for people that have prayer requests, urgent prayer requests, and you can get those texts and you can get those uh, emails. It's a good way to stay connected um, when you're not able to be here in person. Um, but also, probably the most beneficial um, aspect of the website is a tab called Communications tab, and you click on that, and you can send a confidential message to the church office if you uh, have a prayer request that you'd like honored, if you, um, you know, if you have a physical need, or there's anything else that we can help out with, a Bible question maybe that we can help with. Uh, that's just your place for you to go and type something in. So uh, if there's a way that we can bless you, uh, we want to be able to do that. Also, again, I'll mention it again. Please share this video, whether you're watching on YouTube and Facebook, so that you can bless others who may need to hear a message just like this one. Well, that wraps up our, um, our message for this day. I'm going to close this out with a prayer, and hopefully we'll see you back here on our next video. Let's bow together. Dear God, thank you so much for who you are. Lord, you are you are mighty, and uh, nothing can uh, nothing compares to you and your strength. And I pray that we all find strength in you. We all seek your kingdom first and find that strength. And Lord, as we go through our daily lives, please help us to look um, for places where we can give grace and mercy and show forgiveness. And uh, please help us be uh, committed to the things that will uh, bring honor uh, to you. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much for Jesus. And at this time, I pray a, a prayer of a blessing on all those who are watching, uh, a blessing of safety, of health, and of happiness. And Lord, again, we love you and thank you for Jesus. And in his name, I offer this prayer. Amen. Amen. Sing to the King who is coming to reign. Glory to Jesus, the Lamb that was slain. Life and salvation His empire brings. Joy to the nations, for Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song. A song declaring we belong to Jesus. He is all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the King for His returning. We watch and we pray. We will be ready the dawn of the day. We'll join in singing with all the redeemed. Cause Satan is vanquished and Jesus is King. Come, let us sing a song. A song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Come, let us sing a song. A song declaring we belong to Jesus. He's all we need. Lift up a heart of praise. Sing now with voices raised to Jesus. Sing to the key.